Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this session. So today we have Shreya Punj with us. Shreya is the commissioning editor at Penguin Random House India. Before this, she worked at HarperCollins Publishers and Times Internet. She has been a part of the publishing industry since 2015. As the commissioning editor at Penguin Random House, she has worked on many interesting titles with some leading authors. So welcome, Shreya. And thank you so much for taking your time to spare and talk to us about publishing and writing. Thanks, Namada. Thank you so much for the very warm welcome. Yep. So uh, as an editor, you've worked on quite a few books across genres. What makes you pick a book from the many titles that you receive as submissions? So I'll be very honest. The first thing is the list that my publisher has directed me to grow. And mm -hmm. I mean, um, we know when you, when you become a commissioning editor, they often ask you what is your core interest. and mm -hmm. Where would you like to, because everybody needs to have a little bit of a niche. Mm -hmm. And I have always chosen nonfiction right from the day I first joined HarperCollins as a copy editor. Only because uh, my philosophy at that time as a young person was that, oh, if I'm working on nonfiction books at my workplace, uh, I learn something new with each book and I can enjoy my fiction as a me time activity and not have the mix. Oh. <laughs> How, how unwise, but also it, I think it was a smart decision because uh, the nonfiction market in India has always been booming. Yeah. And we're a nation that loves our history, our philosophy, our wars, our self-help. And uh, it's a very interesting market to be in. So that is something I gravitated towards. And that's what I have stuck to. So when I receive, uh, when I receive proposals, I almost often do not look at too much fiction unless it's something which I know I will personally love a lot. Mm. I focus mostly on nonfiction and there what stands out for me is what new problem are you trying to solve? And if it's an old problem that you're trying to solve with your research or with your writing, what's the interesting idea that binds the book together? And uh, nonfiction is, it's almost like a sales pitch because you don't have to send your full manuscript. So it's a, it's a quick decision-making process where I see what value will this book add to any reader's life, I mean, a shelf in the next four or five years. And that is how I base my decision-making process. That's very interesting. Uh, and because uh, that brings me to this question, which we have always discussed in almost all of our FDCs, is that what impact does an author's bio or their credentials and the marketing plan that they might have for the book have on the selection? Because as you said, for nonfiction, we have uh, what we understand is you need to be either a subject market expert or a brand or a person who's with a very heavy credentials for, your, for you to actually write a book on that topic and be accepted for traditional publishing. Absolutely. So, you know... We often think of books and what we write as a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. We're often not able to separate the, the commercial aspect of it to, with, from the personal. And because our identities are so closely linked to what we have produced, much like our offspring, you know, we can't really hear, we can't bear to hear the thought of our offspring underperforming or not doing well or being rejected, that we take this part of pitching and selling your book very uh, in a very negative light mm -hmm. of course you have to be a subject matter of course you need to be fantastic there are people who are going to pay money to hear or listen or you know in, digitally read your ideas and would you pay good money to read somebody's book if they want the best in their field you wouldn't and it's the same for fiction i feel in fiction a your writing has to be exceptional and uh, a lot of people come to me and say, oh, but then what about this author? How did they get published? How did they get published? Well, I mean, there's clearly a readership for them. So we need to ask readers as to what do they enjoy more and supply to them what they want. So that's a moot point. But uh, your author bio for fiction helps the editor get to know you a little better. It helps us know that you, uh, you have a personality beyond the book. It also mm -hmm. helps us know very early on what kind of an aura do we build around you as an author? Right. And are you the quirky author? I mean, of course, people like to be fitted in pegs for easy marketability. And so that's, pro that's a question we ask ourselves. Is this person somebody who will do well in interviews? Are they, some, are they someone who's comfortable with the idea of, you know, being on Instagram lives? 
do they uh, have a social media presence because most some authors are very introverted they do not want to use social media they are purists and uh, i feel like unless you have already established yourself purists will not last too long in a world which is so heavily into social media and where people are guided by uh, almost herd mentality even in terms of book promotions so your mm-hmm. author bio matters a lot it has to be interesting it has to be crisp it has to highlight the best version of who you are almost think of it as a first date and uh, so it has to make a very good impression the marketing plan i mean uh, i say this often you don't have to have a plan you just need to show the publisher that you have intent and uh, that you may have contacts which could come in handy that you're willing to explore the various connections you have made in your life to tap into sales so essentially what it shows is an intention to sell and not just an intention to publish because you don't want your book to be published and lying in the warehouse with no movement very true so uh, are there any favorite categories in non fiction that you usually prefer or do you actually go through every non fiction title that comes and rely only on the writing that comes to oh, i so categories are something we get an indication of from you know the best sellers over the last 5 years uh, every week we get a nielsen book scan which allows us to see which books have shown the maximum of movement week on week and it gives you a fair idea of what the trend is right. another thing that uh, in that makes for this decision making is the fact what's happening in the world so now mm-hmm. if i if i am looking at the news i know that in the next 2 3 years a book on climate will do really well yeah a book that is either simple or hardcore research i also know when the market is booming or when there's a, i mean right now if you see the way content is also being made there's a lot of interest in say investments a lot of people want to take charge of their money so you will see a slew of those kinds of books from people who already have um, a large database of content consumers and um, if you're talking about research let non fiction i just signed on this fantastic book on a military it's a military biography and the reason why that stood out is because this person has never been spoken out before and they've led a very interesting life so interesting that parts of the book have not been revealed to us because it's still uh, you know he still the author still needs sign off and clearances from the army so that i know instinctively will do well because it's revealing a facet of indian history which has hitherto never been covered so you see everything has to be either unique or on trend or it needs to be something which is forward moving where i know and i can anticipate that this book will have a demand so if i sign on it at in 2021 by the time i publish it in 23 i know the market is ready for a subject like that and of course you can always look to the west what is a trend there in january will become a trend here by next july so i've always seen a latency of about 6 months and uh, it's always helped me in good stead i always look at the new york times best seller and i see which diets are picking on which um, fitness trend is here to stay for at least the next 3 years and uh, that's always it's important to have your ear to the ground to then be able to pick and choose which book should be should make the cut true uh shreya though this question was not there in the list but this actually i'm curious to know now that has it ever happened that you have approached somebody on say social media or by reading some article because you saw that that person had a book in them because they were um, a subject matter expert on a topic they were talking so much that you could actually push them to write a book and commission them how how i am so glad that you asked me this because that's the only that's the majority of my commissioning okay. i will, i mostly approach people and give them i go to them with an idea um the first one i did this with where it was kind of unheard of was uh, i published shivesh bharti when i was at harper collins mm-hmm. and i had approached him with ideas out of which i mean now he's on his third book and both his books have done phenomenally well mm-hmm. and these are expensive books so that was a first i then went on to identify lots of these hot pocket content creators whose ideas i felt would translate really well into books one of the latest ones being this book which is 
the book of hope by the better india now this is a community of 25 million people and uh, you know jack canfield did something groundbreaking with the chicken soup series yes. so yes. i wanted something of that sort but very indian mm -hmm. and obviously because i do have economics to think of Mm -hmm. who better than the better india who already has such a vast community mm -hmm. and who are now building their own network social media network that they were the right fit and luckily things worked out and we have this beautiful book which has wonderful stories for lots of different phases of life and um, that part of commissioning is very interesting for me because it often leads to great new projects and is actually my favorite way of commissioning where i go to a person and approach them with an idea and then we make it up from scratch because then when the book is published it's a whole different feeling you know that this was something that both of you worked on together and it's uh, it's quite nice i i'm personally looking forward to dr cuteria's book i guess uh, because i've been following both you and her and her she is definitely somebody i would like to read i would really love to read her book yeah so see uh, the one thing that again a lot of people ask is oh are you only looking at social media accounts then mm. and i say no like dr cutress for example taneya is an oxford graduate yeah uh, she is a proper doctor she's from oxford her credentials couldn't be better Absolutely. in fact as a proof of her uh, writing skills she sent me her her thesis paper which i thought was very well written and extremely accessible even as a you know Uh, only with a working knowledge of biology and uh, it's when i'm discussing the idea with them i i gauge whether they have enough content so to speak that translates well into a book so uh, yeah i mean tanaya's book is going to be super kick ass because it's as fun as she is but also as as educational as her pages yeah uh so one of the most co you know common things that i have found you've said on various platforms is that if i were to be rejected by a traditional publisher and still believe my book is great i would self publish it and market the hell out of it so can you yeah. talk a bit about this like in the sense how do you look at self publishing and do you think authors should have no problems about opting for it today because you know we see we still see that there is a certain taboo associated with the fact that you know we are self publishing it means uh, and writers are not accepted either in literary fests you know lit fests and all this places and there are no lit awards also there are no literary awards for self publishing authors at least in india as of now that we speak so what are your thoughts on self publishing so i stand by what i said and i will keep saying it till i turn blue in the face which is if traditional publishing is hard it is extremely competitive it is it's i mean it's also a snooty little industry and we we pride ourselves in terms of being the gatekeepers of quality and like knowledge and uh, being best the best judge of the literature that's been consumed by the readership that we have and i think that what self publishing allows is it allows for us to democratize the way books are published mm -hmm. so of course there's a hesitancy in accepting this because yes you do not have that brand name behind you uh, you do not know the quality of the manuscript that there is because a self published author can only do so much but i think if you are aware of the process of how a traditional publisher does their books which is you copy edit i mean all of the stages that happen and you're able to produce a solid manuscript and then of course i mean this is a tougher job only because you'll also have to learn a little bit of the back end in terms of how much money do, does amazon need to make sure that your book is ranking well um what are the various marketing tricks and seo tricks that you need to know but again that is knowledge that's easily and readily accessible online these days and there's lots of knowledgeable people who are giving that knowledge so i would as an author do invest time in learning those skills as well because when you self publish especially on kdp you get a 40% royalty whereas the publisher will offer you maximum 10% and that's when you're a very good established author or you're doing a hardback so it's a win win situation if you just master the algorithm because that's all that's required on amazon and i actually happened to be in a clubhouse room where this author he informed me that his mystery books his thrillers that he writes they are set in the uk he lives in the uk and this indian guy he is minting money his books are doing exceptionally well and he says to hell with traditional publishing 
what do I need them for? I mean, they don't like the kind of work I'm doing, but here her sales numbers and my books are doing exceedingly well. And say he sells a hundred copies a day, the price of one puts his marketing budget. So I was shocked. And I thought that was such a, such a pragmatic approach to have. And I asked him, do you want to consider traditional publishing? And he said, absolutely not. So you have people on both ends of the spectrum. Recently, uh, we acquired someone who's a self-published author mm -hmm. and we are bringing out their book in January. So we also keep a lookout on good quality manuscripts that we may find in the self-published you know, title list uh, because there is a lot of talent out there and maybe people don't have an idea of whom to approach, what to do. So uh, of course, I, I stand by self-publishing. I think if done right, if done well, and again, if you have the self-awareness to know whether your work is good or not, um, you should definitely go for it. If, there, if you've been through rounds of rejections and you think you still want to publish. Wow, that's a very interesting approach. Um, you are extremely active on Instagram and have been using it to educate a lot of aspiring writers. So what would your advice be for authors trying to create a presence on social media and any top three tips that you could share, which they could do to create? Mm. so the way i so before i started my account i did a lot of research i swear by research it prevents you from unexpected surprises yeah i learned that the key to anything creative is consistency and to have a framework of rules and regulations where you feel safe enough to then you know experiment in terms of content so the first thing to do, I suggest, would be to define what you are going to use the social media platform for. Identify one or two. More than that, it gets exhausting. At least it has been for me. So, for example, I've completely stopped being on Twitter and now just mindlessly scroll through it when I'm tired. But I'm active on Instagram and I actively engage with people. So, see what your boundaries are. Experiment with the forms. And then see which one fits your work the best. So if you're a poet, perhaps Instagram is a great tool because we've all seen Rupi Kaur. That's the biggest example we have. Mm -hmm. And we all see Nikita Jain. So you could start by sharing poetry. Now that's also become a dated concept. So see how you can do it differently. What is it about your writing that stands out if you would describe it to a friend? And then try and translate that USP into your Instagram or whichever social media account you've chosen. So the other thing that I discovered and I have come to realize is what value are you offering? Are you entertaining? Are you making people emotional? Are you writing the kind of content which you would want to share with people to express sorrow or grief or joy or happiness? Are you giving them words to express themselves? Or are you giving them knowledge, for example, business tips or life tips or career tips? So you have to provide some value or maybe you're just damn entertaining. And that's also great. So, for example, there's an author called Richa Mukherjee uh, who's done three books with HarperCollins and her reels are hilarious. So, I love her writing, but I also really enjoy getting to know her as an author beyond her writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, she uses her Instagram to connect with her readers that way. So, so first you have your um, platform and your consistency. Then you have the intent behind what you want to do. And then the third thing I would be is have fun with it. Please don't think of it as a task. Nothing that seems like a task will be fun and your audience will find you boring and it will go nowhere. So have fun when you're doing it. Know that you're doing this as an added layer to your personality and done with it. That's great. Uh, uh, Shia, can you tell us a bit about what happens after a book is picked by you or your publishing house, like the steps involved, the time period till release, and what all is expected from a writer after this stage? Sure. I'll be very glad to that. Um, so once you sign on, so, okay, let's say you sent in your proposal and your manuscript and the editor whom you sent it to gets back to you and says, okay, congratulations. We are very excited. And they send you an offer letter. Once you have accepted the offer, the next in line thing is they send you a contract. It is at this time the publisher will let you know when they intend to publish your book. So for example, if I find you on now, my calendar for 2022 is full. My calendar up to July 23 is full. I would perhaps say that, hey, since this is poetry, 
or since this is sentimental fiction let's bring it out in october it's a really good time people are in a good mood the weather is nice we can have a good launch and we decide on a month and year once that's done you have your contract it's signed sealed and delivered and uh, you then move on to the editor will let you know the various stages the book will go through but largely the stages are you submit your first your, your final draft your commissioning editor will do a structural edit on it and give you feedback on the broader plot points or you know the name itself is quite clear the structural edit implies that they will tell you if certain characters need to change a little bit if there is inconsistency in plot if there's something we can do to improve upon the chapter quality if you're writing non fiction uh, i for example prefer my author send me chapters as and when they write it and then we schedule weekly calls to discuss those so i'm aware of where each chapter is and going i don't want to receive 90000 words which i then don't like so i prefer doing it chapter by chapter but that's only for non fiction uh for fiction your editor will tell you broadly that uh, either i love it or here are a few changes that suggest and you incorporate those and then send the file back this file then now goes into copy editing and line editing where a copy editor who specializes in this task will go through each sentence carefully make sure it's not it's not got any consistency issues it follows the house style of the publishing house uh the grammar is checked the um in non fiction for example they'll check the references they'll do a basic fact check and basically make sure that your manuscript is clean clear and ready to be printed but that's not where it ends this file is then sent to the author for approval uh please know that as an author nothing in the manuscript changes without your explicit approval uh all good publishing houses will run their changes past you uh for example just yesterday evening i sent an email to my author letting them know that in one page we had changed the ampersand to a and d if mm-hmm. even that minute change is communicated with the author because at the end of the day it's your book and we are just its you know guardians so yeah once the copy editing is done the book is typeset once the typesetting is done it goes to a proofreader for one last final sanitation check and the author is also sent the first proofs this is the last stage where publishers allow for any changes to be made once these changes are incorporated the file is sent to press simultaneously you have the cover being designed and yes author's inputs are most welcome and encouraged during this round your editor will reach out to you and ask you what your ideas on the cover are and sometimes authors have great ideas other times they don't really have a sense of what will do well in the market so we advise them on that and mm-hmm. uh, the cover is again a joint venture where we try and ensure that all stakeholders are happy but the happiest obviously has to be sales because your book needs to sell and they usually have a very good eye for covers um sometimes they don't but then if the book is a best seller really who cares and that's about it and then of course the ma- publicity and marketing phase begins and the author is given a publicity and marketing plan which covers all the activities interviews excerpts online engagement programs that will happen for the book and um, are then carried forward once the author's suggestions are also taken in i hope that's yeah i hope that's clear yeah absolutely uh, so we come to the last question that i have for you uh, we'll be opening the floor for questions after this so in case you have any questions for share please leave them in the comments i'm seeing there are already a couple of questions already there so i'll be taking them up once we are done with this last question uh, shreya as we all know by now the onus of marketing pretty much lies with the author so what would you advise be to an author who's about to market their book who's about to plan and release their book i would say start marketing it in your head as soon as the contract is done mm-hmm. so first of all pat yourself in the back for getting a contract but then start building your network uh the publishing industry as chetan and i were discussing is rather small and it is imperative that you are aware of the various stakeholders right from an indie bookseller to somebody in a mall store who you know tells people what to read go make your presence felt interact be friendly be seen be known uh, interact with publishers and publishing houses on social media and uh, i mean we're all living in the current times and we know that this is the power of social media where you know if you yeah. are seen interacting with a lot of people 
you create the right kind of crowd around you and interact with authors whose books you have loved and speak with them so that by the time your book comes there's already a community within publishing who knows you at least and who's on friendly terms with you so this is a social game and you must play it well and in the you'd also end up making a lot of great new connections so that's one advice i would give you the other being that have realistic expectations as far as publicity is concerned depending on your genre so do your research if there are other books in the same genre see what kind of marketing or coverage they got so you have a sense of what to expect from the publishing house also and uh, I, i mean i think that's that's the advice i have from the top of my head yeah. and yeah the third thing i would say is please your little, your little black book that you have don't be afraid of telling all the people you know to buy your book and talk about it and review it wherever they can because word of word of mouth is the strongest seller of books even today and uh, tap into that as much as you can great thank you that's been really helpful so we'll move on to questions now the first question is from shalini uh, she wants to know what's the best time in a manuscript timeline to pitch a non fiction manuscript when we are almost completing it or are midway through it the non fiction requires just an excellent proposal and two sample chapters so i would suggest don't finish your manuscript because uh, if there's potential the editor or the publishing house will come back to you with feedback and you don't want to then have to rework what you've already written when just two sample chapters would have sufficed right thank you you most welcome uh the next one is from anjali so like would you publish a book that is not likely to be a best seller but is of a very high quality yes absolutely i mean that's what literary fiction is all about uh, or even some literary non fiction where the book is excellently researched the author has great credentials or maybe even a, a translation in literary fiction which we know will not sell as much as uh, enough to make a profit but then as a big publishing house we have that luxury to be able to afford a few losses for the sake of the greater good and uh, if it's high quality and it's well written and it's unique we will go for it sure uh, the next one is from stanley how how do you see a first time author compared to an established author when you choose a book to publish i mean that's another way question actually an established author obviously that has box in the sense that there's already an audience that knows them and uh, the expectations from their book sales are higher so there's a lot of stake there whereas with a debut author you have a chance of really making it work and using your creative juices as a publisher to make sure the book does well uh, other than that i am not sure as to if there's any specific uh, area you'd like for me to comment on sure. the next question is from ram if an unpublished if an unpublished book or a self published book has been made into a web series would a traditional publisher be willing to consider it for publication yes uh i think he has next he has another question also in non fiction if an author has taken in his work a position that is contrary to an already published book by penguin would you consider the manuscript uh it will be considered for its own merits and arguments okay uh the next question is from richard hi shreya i have a question on the overall book publishing business are overall book sales increasing significantly physical or and ebook versions no there's nothing significant i mean it's rising which is a great thing always over the pandemic we saw an 18% jump now i don't know if that's significant or not but um, i think it's it's hopeful cautiously hopeful and we're moving in the right direction yeah but question sure, sorry i'm going to jump in so the 18% is for penguin random house or is that for the industry no it's i think just for penguin random house this jump we saw in especially our uh, ebook and audio books because that saw a significant jump during sure. the pandemic yeah sure. Sure. Uh, however it's still skewed more towards physical copies of books it's still a traditionalist industry uh, however the jump is exciting because it means that there's a lot more to explore in terms of how books are consumed especially yeah. in india which is i would call it a nascent market i mean people are still just about discovering podcasts and right. uh, yeah so there's no nothing 
greatly significant, but it is, like I said, always hopeful and optimistic. So the next question is from Divya. She's asking, how can first time writers approach a big publishing house like yours with a very good author bio and a good networking circle that can help to grow book better? Uh, you approach them with the idea. You see, one thing I like to make clear is you may have the best network and you may have a really good author bio, but if you don't write well, your book might not see light of day because at the end of it, your writing has to be good. It has to, I mean, if not good for everybody, it has to be good for a large number of people for whom it makes sense and whom it's targeted towards. So that is something you must keep in mind. And um, I don't know if you, you can reach out to them via LinkedIn, you can reach out to them via Twitter, you can reach out to them via agents. So there's a lot of options to reach uh, editors. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Are there any other questions that you would like to ask, Shreya? Yeah, I had a couple of questions. Sure, so uh, <clears throat> uh, if, a, if an author is already published in one genre, maybe with another company, and now I want to switch genres completely and write something completely different, uh, uh, does that still help? Uh, you know, being a, being a published author, but let's say I've written a novel and now I want to write a nonfiction book. Does it still help that I've written a novel or not? Or it just means that, okay, the guy can write, but that's all. Yeah, it depends. Again, it's very, it's very subjective, to be honest. I, there's a very good example for this. Um, so there's an author of mine who wrote this hardcore HR book, fantastic book. And um, it, was, it was a business book. But then his next proposal in the same publishing house was an was a extremely well-researched book of history. And as his editor, I was shook said, wait, you have this side to your personality as well. Okay. This rather uh, professorly side and it's not just about HR and getting people to work better. And he said, yes. And both the books went on to do extremely, extremely well. Now, when we were discussing the book, the idea is discussed separate from the author. First, we see, are there bias for this idea? Who the author is comes a little second in line. Unless, I mean, you're Amitabh Ghosh, then you could write whatever you want and we will publish it because you're just that good. Uh, so... Yeah. So we first discussed the idea as a whole. We found merit in it. And of course, I mean, if you've already published with some publishing house, you may know people. We have heard about you. You're just a more familiar name. So it's, the conversation just becomes not about whether he can write or not, but just whether this particular idea written by this particular person will sell or not. So it's a slightly easier gateway, but that's about it. However, if your book has done terribly, I would like to tell you that we will know about it. So we'll know, oh, his book didn't do well. So <laughs> are we sure? And then again, the question boils down to, but hey, that one didn't do well, but that was fiction. This is another genre. And let's give it a try because the idea is really good. So that's the other word that you've been putting out there. And every time I come across that word, I, I can't help but ask this question. What is the best Yeah, the best seller is... <laughs> It, that's also subjective. It, it's, so there's I, no definitions. There's no like math saying, okay, more than 5,000 is best. No, 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 there is. There is. The number is 10,000 copies. Okay. You have to have sold 10,000 copies and that's a bestseller in India. It's a, it's a very small number. Yeah. Uh, in fact, foreign, foreign counterparts to us often laugh about it, but it is what it is. Uh, however, the, the, you know, this one scale fits all doesn't work. Especially if you're doing a very niche book. So, for example, we did um, this translation, the first ever English novel to be, uh, Bihari novel to be translated into English, Fulsungi. Now, we know there's a market for it, but that market is limited. So, to say that this is a bestseller, it has done well for the publishing house, only if it sold 10,000 copies is a bit harsh. So, there we change our metric to other things which... So we, we see whether it has made an impact on the audience, what kind of media attention it garnered. Those are the softer aspects we look at, but just plain sales, 10,000 copies. Okay. So, sorry, I'm going to hog the limelight, but one last question. Sorry. Yeah, can I go ahead, Namrata? Are there other questions from folks? One more, you can go ahead. We have time. No worries. I'll ask this. Okay. So the question I want to ask is uh, actually for somebody I know. So, hmm. uh, 
they are working on a book which i'm pretty sure is going to be very interesting it is non fiction it is lived experience of the author uh, cr- credentials of the author are fantastic mm. and uh, she's already 30000 words into the book uh, now uh, the big question is should she approach publishers directly or should she go through a literary agent she's already published one book with rupa and mm. that was also non fiction so would you recommend and she doesn't want to go back to rupa because rupa didn't give her an enter uh, uh, ascent of royalty after the uh, after the advance check so uh, what is the your suggestion i mean um, in this case because she already published with rupa i might go the agent route because her barrier to entry is low she can approach an agent and be guaranteed that she'll get offers so in this case i would use my connections in the industry to get an agent it also okay. makes it a little easier to pitch it you don't have to do it yourself you have someone reliable doing it for you and you know they're sending it to the right editor sure fair enough okay thank you thanks chetan uh anjali uh, sorry i'm taking the liberty to answer your question here so this is actually a part of every traditional publishing house at least the top 5 that you approach which includes penguin harper collins and all they have their contacts they have their entire channel of marketing with tie ups with booksellers bookstores and everywhere so this does not fall under the author's purview if you're getting traditionally published by the top 5 players okay thanks yeah uh sure sure we have the next question from ashisha uh, what is your take on novellas or ebooks are they commercially viable and do traditional publishers like penguin publish any uh again e- what is an ebook here because in traditional publishing an ebook is the kindle or google yeah. or whatever digital version of your book yeah. so each book will have an ebook now it is mandatory and it is very well specified in your contract and now we are moving towards an age where each book will have not just the ebook but also the audiobook so you can't leave any avenue unexplored anymore and uh, novellas um i'm not sure but the traditional publishing house would be very interested or keen on one because the novella is slim it is expensive to produce the indian market doesn't accept it too well you also have to think it's uh, if it's a small book the spine is slim so it's going to get lost in the bookstores so we're not very keen on novellas again unless it is exceptional or it comes from a person whose work you cannot not publish so yeah as a debut i would not be very hopeful of a great response for a novella or short stories or poetry these are three tight three buckets that don't do very well in india this is a very commonly asked question short story collection i'll cover it <laughs> just covering yeah. it right here <laughs> is this a golden books but if you want to get published in those genres please start reading more of those I, you know I, i was horrified the other day somebody wanted to write in sci-fi and i said hey it's a it's a genre that's not yet picked up in india from indian authors uh, so they said oh how come i mean i love this genre i said which indian author in this genre have you read there plenty and they said none i said but you want to join them when you've read none them yourself so you realize <laughs> nobody can read yours which is why we won't publish it so start reading in your authors pick up indian books for every one western person you buy at least by two indian you will not be disappointed and uh, make great books guys i mean come on so <laughs> what genres do you think uh, actually sell well if you were to recommend somebody to try because you've said what don't so are there some of the which genre sells all genres eventually sell it's just that you see a few years where a certain trend picks up so right. say 5 years ago romcoms were the thing to go for because right. love was in the air uh, this year you must have seen there's a slew of covid related books or virus related books or immunity and health and mental health related books so it's always very trend based mm-hmm. and like i said if you have written a book in a genre which is not doing well right now maybe don't lose hope I mean, there's this countless stories of very big authors who waited years and years, and it's not because those publishers were stupid. It's just that there was not, it was not the right time for that book. So you just have to wait for the wind to change a little, and then be ready. 
be ready with your presence, be ready with published work, be ready with the network. So it's actually a great opportunity for you to build it because fantasy will blow up in India. We love it as a culture and uh, your time will come. I promise you that, you know. I think people often inflate it like, oh, J.K. Rowling was rejected by 11 publishers. No, it's not that she was rejected because she was a bad writer or because the publishers didn't know. All editors have pretty much the same caliber, let me tell you. <laughs> it's just that some by the time it probably reached Bloomsbury's desk, the tide had changed and they perhaps saw that there was a market ready for this kind of book. That's it. Thank you. That's actually been very motivational and gives us a little hope. <laughs> In a sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, Divya. We have actually collated a list of litigants in India on our blog. I'll share that link with you uh, in the WhatsApp group once this session is over. Uh, so, everybody, I just wanted to uh, shut it. If you still have some time. Yeah, I have time. Yeah. yeah, so my question was uh, uh, regarding uh, <clears throat> timing. Uh, you know, you mentioned the the amount of time that it takes and it's a little shocking for an author to think that okay I submit a manuscript today and I might be looking at publishing it in oh yeah it's know, always it always October comes. 2023 so that's like a one and a half year long wait yeah. and that's one of the big uh, big things that really goes against traditional publishing because yeah. self-publishing can pretty much be done instantly but yes. if there was a unique uh, uh, you know a book but which is time bound something like a let's say a handbook on a particular issue you know a handbook on music and the, or or handbook on uh, on something which is current and and which the author would like to see updated on an annual basis uh, do you think that a proposal like that would even be considered by a penguin upfront or would it be smarter for that person to try and go and do a self publishing prove the concept prove the volumes measure all of that and then go to a traditional publisher and say hey guys if you now want to hook up we're selling 3000 copies a year and we want to do a, a annual version of this handbook or something would that what do you what do you think how do you think it will work so first of all if it is a time bound thing where we know it has to hit the market at a certain time only right. then will it sell we make it happen okay. those are called crunch titles and uh, everything that just goes at double the speed or actually no triple the speed so okay. that's been done before and it will continue happening but those are very newsy topics that it happens on and even then there's a lot of hesitancy in doing those because you don't know the kind of errors that will creep in and you also don't know uh, the quality of edits being done so I'm going to clarify uh, if, I, if i may jump in what I'm thinking about is more like an almanac you know, or a I'm Malayana just, Marona, that, which will I'm only come up every year. The timelines differ for each book. And if okay. there is something that is topical, a okay. publishing house will make it happen okay. if there's a lot of profit there. If there isn't, where it hardly is, uh, unless it's the US, you know, where books do sell like hotcake. In India, the payoff is very mm. little. Uh, but the time consumed is too much then. So now if it's an almanac, uh, I remember Penguin has this quiz series, for example, or they do, um, there was one curated by, I'm forgetting, but they had an early, early updated version that used to go out. Um, and that would sell quite a fair bit. But now in this current time to have that going, it will really be dependent on the idea and what the sales team thinks of it. I'm not saying we're the best decision makers. Sometimes we do get these things wrong and this could be a potential landmine of, you know, a new way of looking at books, which is subscription, uh, which is, you know, every year the edition is updated. But mostly this is a format done in magazines or like those Manorama yearbooks and publishers for us to get a new ISBN, to have the whole machinery revolve around a few changes in the manuscript uh, can be a lot of waste of time for us. And... Uh, uh, again, it would really depend on the idea. Okay. So if and someone that... does have it, I would definitely suggest you ask an editor as to, hey, if they could advise you on it. And if they suggest that you go and first try it out uh, on your own, then go ahead and do that. But take somebody's advice on the exact specific idea you have. Okay. My last question, I swear this is the last question, no is, uh, <clears throat> is about the she, her, uh, after your name on the descriptor. Now, this is a very, very common and, you know, uh, very accepted thing in the US, but it's still very, very new in India. 
and i think we still fumble a lot on around that because we are just not as gender informed yeah. so uh, and gender sensitive so uh, uh, what's your advice to does it firstly you know if you get a if you get a a, a, a submission from an author which is you know not sensitive does it matter and what is your advice to people who are writing to publishers and, and lit agents not just you but any publisher or lit agent uh, uh, you know what does this mean first explain it conceptually and then what does it mean to an author approaching you know trying to push trying to push their book out, out into the world this is too nuanced in the indian space right now to be honest um the only reason i put it there was because uh, somebody whom i'm friends with said that if you're going to be using this id and interacting with lots of young people uh younger people are usually faster than the slightly older generation in terms of learning new things and act, being more in with the times and she said it will just make for a space safe for space for them and i fully accepted her reasoning she's a smart young woman and i promptly changed it to she and her uh to show my solidarity for anybody who exists out of the binary that there is and another significance behind this is that gender is a spectrum and we don't have to conform ourselves to a he or she narrative you can also be a they them and you should have the option to choose your pronouns for yourself and how you'd like to be addressed and putting it across your name tells the other person instead of leaving them to understand it by context because not everybody has the sensitivity or sometimes the time to you know parse through what you've written and see which uh, which pronouns you use for yourself so it's just a very clear indicator of what you identify as and what you'd like to be referred as that's about it it's basically about consent and informed choice and uh, as far as doing it when you're presenting yourself to an editor or publisher is concerned if you do it great if you don't do it that's also absolutely fine uh it will not be a mark against you unless of course uh, you are writing something that is insensitive or offensive um so don't do that that's about it this is not right now a definitive need thank you that's very helpful shreya we have one more question from ashisha uh, yeah. is there a particular number of publications that one shouldn't exceed in a year so as to not be lost in the market like five books annually not necessarily by the traditional publishers but K including kdp and all etc so i think what she's trying to ask is are there any number of books that one should not exceed yeah, like you know like if you as an actor do too many movies you become a very there's a fatigue in the audience and the like yeah so you want to maintain a little bit of illusion i mean uh, a little bit of distance from your audience as well and give them a break from seeing your rather charming face or writing so there is no i mean i don't have a figure there i think uh, that would entirely depend on the feedback you're getting from your audience and uh, by doing a bit of market research and seeing what works best for you so uh, traditional publishers fyi we only if an author if you sign a two book deal it's one book a year and we space it far apart because we don't want there to be any sort of fatigue in the audience mm -hmm. or the media so you you know no longer no remain newsy and i mean in just apply it on yourself man if your favorite author was churning out book after book and then telling you please buy my this book and that book you just be like okay that's enough i've had enough of it you're pushing too much down my throat right. not letting me savor the last one and then you out you are with the new one so just apply the same thing on yourself as a consumer and you will have your answer would you want your favorite author to do this i don't think so right oh, but is there a number i have i don't right uh, so everyone i would like to announce that we are hosting a workshop with shreya where she'll be actually teaching you how to pitch your book uh, shreya would you like to tell us a bit about what you'll be covering in the workshop absolutely so uh, this workshop will be helpful to anybody who plans on publishing a book one day or is in the process of you know uh, gathering the nerve to pitch it so if you want to understand how the indian publishing industry works of course a, a little more detailed than a bird side view if you want to understand um, what is pitching what do you mean by you know sending your proposal to an editor or to an agent and what consists what are the ingredients of the perfect proposal that make you make your pitch so much better if these are things you're interested in if you're interested in understanding 
how do you write the good a good author bio how do you write a good synopsis how do you make sure your idea is represented well on paper and also the question most people have which is uh, what kind of a marketing plan do i need to have uh, do i need to give comparative titles or not all these points will be covered in this comprehensive workshop which will ensure that you by the time the workshop is over and the questions are answered we'll know exactly what to write in your pitch and what details to give what to avoid so it will be a full one on one on book pitching so the workshop is on 18th december and it's a saturday we are having it in the morning and uh, the link should be up on the website by tomorrow i'll share it in the group so anybody you know or even you yourself would like to join please do join the workshop through that link it will be great we'll have a great weekend actually where we'll talk with shreya about how and what goes behind a book yeah uh, thank you thank you so much dipya chetan are you there i think chetan is not there no oh, no i'm definitely here he's okay. here okay <laughs> uh, you wanted to talk about the fdc this is the last two days yeah so <laughs> a lot of water under the bridge shreya i don't know if you're familiar with what the fdc is and uh, you know uh, what we do here but uh, 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 how has it been going we have the stalwarts the the rams and the sharanis of the world how is it going for the rest of us any feedback thoughts uh, what do you guys think uh, it's been like this time when i'm looking at the numbers there's a, a lot of action that seems to be there but it's still a you know uh, it's still i think we are short of where we were last time when we hit uh, when we were doing september so we are at 223 right now there's always a few people who haven't updated the tracker but even then 223 is kind of a little slow so uh, so i don't know if there was any particular reason why is bar to there was no pandemic i think pandemics are helpful for writing because you write because it was diwali i guess diwali uh, weekend diwali. yeah so maybe that was a lot of distraction ram has sent me a very detailed uh, this uh, analysis of all four fdcs this time not just the one but ram we'll probably talk about that next weekend yeah, yeah. all right so we'll go over that next weekend and so any uh, any observations any any thoughts from anybody at all uh, yeah sure shalini please go ahead No, I I didn't have anything to say. I thought somebody was going to say. I mean, I just, you are welcome to speak. I don't mean to tell you not to speak, Shalini. I just meant it would also be great to hear from the others. How no, no, no. Going. I actually this time I haven't uh, been writing that consistently uh, for different reasons. I actually picked up only two days back, so I've, I've not been updating, and that's why I don't have much to say. Um, I'll let the others take it up. Okay. So my observation was that chetan people have kept very small goals and there are some actually who have overachieved their goals so matlab even okay. if it was just 10000 now they are writing 11000 12000 words they have crossed their goal and they are still writing so though the word count might look less but i think that dedication has helped for some people while some are still working and they want to continue this that's what the group conversations say that the tracker and all has been helping but they need at least a few more months to get their entire draft complete sure <clears throat> radhika has a very interesting uh, observation she's saying that i didn't write a single word because everything exploded like the sand uh, like the pandemic suddenly lifted so the fact that the pandemic went away actually reduced how much people were able to write because i guess people landed up going to offices and you know resuming a normal life instead yeah. of being able to squeeze in an hour here or there being at home so that's interesting uh okay so no further comments or observations from anyone then uh, we'll call it a day and uh, i'm really looking forward to shreya's workshop i think there'll be a lot to learn and uh, yeah so look forward to that that's 18th you said yeah december 18th yes okay so saturday morning Perfect. we'll free you up by brunch i mean by lunch sorry all right sounds great well, it's fantastic to be able to talk to somebody who's actually in there doing the work real time as we speak so the kind of information that will that will offer will be fantastic that will be great thank you thanks so much everyone yeah. thank, thank you, you so much everyone thank you mahoda thank you so much chetan and i hope to see you both soon in person in the himalayas do that yes yes sure. definitely thank <laughs> you all right delhi mein kya rakha hai yeah true solution ke all right bye bye have a great
Monday, guys. We Take will. care. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.